This lesson, we are going to learn how to solve a linear system graphically. Let's look at how many solutions, which means number of intersections, a linear system can have. On the first graph, let's define line 1 and line 2. When line 1 and line 2, they do not have the same slope, then they will definitely have one point of intersection, which means they will have one solution. The second graph, when two lines, they have the same slope, and they do not have the same y-intercept. That means those two lines are parallel lines, which means there is no point of intersection. So this linear system will have no solution. The third graph is when those two lines, they actually overlap. That means they have the same slope and they have the same y-intercept. That means every single point on the line is a point of intersection. So this linear system will have infinite number of solutions. Example 1, let's label them line 1 and line 2. For line 1, the equation is already in the slope and y-intercept form. So we can define the y-intercept, which is the constant term, that is the 1 without the x, which is negative 3. And we can define the slope, which is the coefficient of the x term, which is half. The numerator of the slope means the rise. Since it is positive, that means 1 unit up. The denominator of the slope is the wrong. Since it is positive, that means 2 units to the right. Now we are ready to graph the line. We start with the y-intercept, which is at negative 3 on the y-axis, and then we use the slope to find the next point. So from the y-intercept, we will go up by 1 unit, and we'll go to the right by 2 units. So 2 and negative 2 is our next point. And you can do it again, 1 unit up, 2 units to the right, and you will find another point. Connecting those three points, you can make a straight line. After we draw the line, make sure we label them, either with the equation number 1, or you can write the equation y equals half x minus 3. For line 2, the equation is not in terms of the y-intercept and slope form. So first, we have to isolate for y by subtracting x on both sides, and then we can define the y-intercept, which is the constant term, which is negative 6. And then we have to find our slope, which is the coefficient of the x term, which is a negative 1. And then we have to write the slope negative 1 into a fraction, which is a negative 1 over positive 1. Here we can see the rise is 1 unit down because the rise is negative, and the wrong is 1 unit to the right. Now we are ready to graph line 2. First, we graph the y-intercept, which is at negative 6 on the y-axis, and then we use the slope to find the next point. Since the slope is going down by 1 and going to the right by 1, our next point will be at 1 and negative 7. And if you use the slope to find another point again, 1 unit down, 1 unit to the right, you will get 2 and negative 8. By connecting those three points, you will get line 2. Once again, please remember to label line 2 or simply the equation. And then we have to find where they intersect, which is at negative 2 and negative 4. And finally, we can make a therefore statement. Therefore, the solution is at negative 2, comma, negative 4. Example 2. First, that's label equation 1 and equation 2. From equation 1, we have to isolate for y, subtract x on both sides, and then we times by negative 1 on both sides. Now, we have to look for our slope and y-intercept. So we write y equals 1x plus 0. y-intercept is the constant term, b equals 0. Slope is the coefficient of the x, which is 1. And we will write as a fraction, slope is going to be positive 1 over positive 1. Numerator means 1 unit up. 
denominator means one unit to the right. Now, let's graph line one. We start with the y-intercept at y equals to zero. Then, we use the slope from the y-intercept to go to the next point. So, from the y-intercept, you go up by one, go to the right by one. Now, we have the next point. And once again, from this point, we go up by one, go to the right by one, we got another point. Now, we just need to connect those points to make a line. Remember to label the equation of the line at the end of the line. Next, we have to graph line 2. From equation 2, we know 2x plus y equals 3. Once again, we have to isolate for y to get the y-intercept and slope form. So we subtract 2x to get y equals negative 2x plus 3. As we can see, the slope is the coefficient in front of the x term and y-intercept is the constant term. So we know the y-intercept, b equals to 3, slope, which is negative 2. And we have to write negative 2 into a fraction, which is negative 2 over positive 1. From here, we can see the rise is negative 2, which means 2 units down, and the wrong is positive 1, means 1 unit to the right. Now let's graph the line. We start with the y-intercept at y equals 3, and we use the slope 2 units down from the y-intercept and 1 unit to the right. That's our next point. And let's do again. From this point, 2 units down, 1 unit to the right. That's our next point. Make sure we label equation 2 at the end of the line. And let's find where the lines intersect, which is at 1, 1. Then we make a therefore statement. Therefore, the solution is at 1, 1. Example 3. This time, we're going to use the x and y intercepts to graph the lines instead of using slope and y-intercept form. Label then equation 1 and 2. From equation 1, we have to find the x-intercept. So we have to let y equals 0. Once we put 0 into the y to isolate for x, that will be our x-intercept. Next, we have to find y-intercept. That means we have to let x equal to 0. We substitute 0 into the x to find the y value. We get y equals negative 1. Now we know two points that are on the graph. The first one is the x-intercept at 1. The second one is the y-intercept at negative 1. By connecting those two points, we get our first line. From equation 2, x plus 2y equals 7. Let's find our x-intercept, let y equals 0. So you will get x plus 2 times by 0 equals 7. x will be 7. Let's find our y-intercept, let x equal to 0. Then you will get 2y equals 7. That means y equals 7 over 2. Let's put on the x-intercept at 7 and y-intercept at 3.5 connecting those two points to make another line. Now we can see the intercept at the point 3, 2. Therefore, our solution is at 3, 2. Example 4. When we look at the first equation, if I want to use the x and y intercepts to graph, you can see x intercept, when you let y equal to 0, 20 cannot be divided by 3 properly. Therefore, we will use the slope and y-intercept to graph. Let's label then equation 1 and 2. From equation 1, we have to isolate for y. So we subtract 3x on both sides, and then we divide it by 4 on both sides. Then we can define our y-intercept, which is b equals to 5. And then we can define our slope, which is the coefficient of the x term, which is negative 3 over 4. Then we can write slope as a fraction, negative 3 over positive 4. Negative 3 means 3 units down. Positive 4 means 4 units to the right. Once again, when we graph, we start from the y-intercept at 5. And then we use the slope, which is going down by 3 units from the y-intercept, and go to the right by 4. Now we get to our second point. And we do it again, we will get to our third point, connecting those three points to make a line. 
From the equation two, first subtract four x on both sides of the equation. Then we divide by five on both sides. Then we can find the y-intercept at b equals to two. Slope the coefficient of the x term, which is negative four over five, which can be written as negative four over positive five. This means we go down by four units and go to the right by five units from the y-intercept. From this graph, we do not see a point of intersection. However, as the lines extend on the left hand side, we will eventually see the lines will intersect at the point negative 60 and 50. This is why we always prefer to use algebra to solve a linear system instead of using a graph. As for the conclusion, you could say, therefore, the solution of this linear system cannot be determined at this time, or you could say the solution is at negative 60 and 50. Example 5. Determine the number of solutions to each linear system. Part A. Let's label equation 1 and equation 2. From equation 1, we know the slope is 3, y intercept is negative 5. From equation 2, we know the slope is 4, y intercept is 6. Since the slope of the first line is not equal to the slope of the second line, Therefore, we know there is one intersection. Part B. Let's label equation 3 and equation 4. From equation 3, we know the slope is 4, y intercept is negative 3. From equation 4, slope is 4, and y intercept is negative 7. Because those two lines, they have the same slope and different y intercept, this implies they are parallel lines. Therefore, there will be no intersection, which means no solution. Part C. Let's label equation 5 and equation 6. From equation 5, we have to isolate for y to get the y-intercept in slope form. So we can get the slope is negative half, y-intercept is 5. From equation 6, first, let's rearrange then. We put negative 0.5x first, and then we write on the constant. Then change the negative 0.5 into a fraction to be negative 1 over 2. So we can see the slope is negative 1 over 2, and the y-intercept is going to be 8. Since those two lines, they have the same slope and different y-intercept, therefore we know they are parallel lines, means no solution. Part D. Let's label equation 7 and equation 8. From equation 7, let's isolate for y. We get the slope, which is the coefficient of the x term, which is negative 1. We got the y-intercept, which is the invisible number, after the x term, which is 0. From equation 8, let's isolate for y. So we know the slope, which is the coefficient of the x term, which is 1. The y-intercept is also at 0. Since those two lines, they do not have the same slope, this means those two lines, they will have one intersection point, which we say there is one solution. Example 6. A couple has budgeted $5,000 for their wedding reception. Which hotels offers the better deal and under what conditions? At Waverly Inn, they charge $200 plus $40 per guest. At Hotel Niagara, they charge $1,000 plus $30 per guest. First, let's model the situation using a linear system. Let C represent the total cost in dollars, and that N represents number of guests. At Waverly Inn, the total cost C will equal to $40 times by number of guests, which is N, plus 200. At Hotel Niagara, the total cost C will equal to $30 times by number of guests, which is N, plus 1,000. Step 2. Let's craft a line and label the lines with the name of the hotel. 
Since we know the number of guests cannot be negative, therefore we will erase the lines on the left hand side of the vertical axis. Step 3. Let's make a conclusion. At the point of intersection, we know they have the same cost with the same amount of guests. So we know the cost at Waverly Inn will be the same as the cost at Hotel Niagara when n equals 80. Before the point of intersection, we know the line of the Waverly Inn is lower than the line of Hotel Niagara. So we know the cost of Waverly Inn is less than the cost at Hotel Niagara is when the number of guests is in between 0 and 80. After the point of intersection, we know the line of the Waverly Inn is higher than the line of the Hotel Niagara. So we know the cost at Waverly Inn is higher than the cost at Hotel Niagara when the number of guests is bigger than 80.